All right. Well, a very, depending on where you are in the country, a very good afternoon or morning. And thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Uh, we are hopefully going to have a lot of fun. Um, I have set up a, a webinar that uh, deviates from the norm and going to uh, show you the, the, the five reasons why to play Jeopardy uh, as a training game at work. Um, this on, the, on your screen, on the right-hand side of your screen is me, um, but looking a lot better than in real life. So I, I like my illustration. So we're going we're gonna to show the illustration instead of me. My graphic designers did a great job. So um, we're going to uh, use what I want to call a, a blended approach to, um, to this webinar. And, and by the way, please, if you have questions, add them to the chat. Uh, my colleague, Jamie, is uh, in the chat room, and she'll either uh, answer those questions directly or she'll bring them to my attention so that we can talk about it over the next, uh, the next few minutes. So what I've done is I have set up uh, a Jeopardy game uh, whose intent is to uh, speak to the five reasons to employ a Jeopardy game in your training. Uh, and those five reasons are to generate uh, excitement, to drive home better learning, to be able to assess what your employees and what you know, uh, to drive deeper engagement, and uh, um, for cultural purposes. So um, at the beginning of each game, if you wish to have a leaderboard, and uh, I very much uh, recommend doing so as a way of driving competition, uh, you can request uh, initials, and I'll go ahead and enter mine. You have the opportunity also, as we'll see in a few minutes when we take a look at the back end, to uh, use the registration engine that is part of the training arcade um, as to have people actually sign up when they are entering, or you can use single sign-on. Uh, we have different ways of engaging through directly through your LMS. So lots of ways to bring your employees into your Jeopardy game. So here's a board that I created. It is um, a five by three board, and um, as you'll see in just a couple minutes. In the, in the back end, we have the opportunity to make this board be as small as three by three or as large as five by five. So really up to you as the creator of the game to determine how much content you have and how much time you want to engage your learner. So what I have done here is I'm, I'm going to use a game as a way of explaining why I have a game. It's rather counterproductive to use a PowerPoint to try and describe why you should have a game. So this falls under the heading of, uh, if you would, eating our own dog food, as the expression goes. So I um, want to play a round. Uh, we're not going to play the entire round because that would just take too long. But I've set up a couple of columns, and um, I'm going to go ahead and play this just a little bit, and then we're going to jump into uh, the back end to show you more reasons to use Jeopardy and, and why it can be a highly effective part of your uh, overall e-learning or instructor-led training. So um, many of you may be paying attention to the uh, James, I'm going to get his last name wrong, a uh, househauser, uh, who has just surpassed a million dollars in winnings. And he has a, he's a professional gambler, uh, and he has a different way of playing the board. So I'm going to go ahead and, and use some of, of his techniques, his gambling strategies, by starting at the bottom, actually. So, again, five categories. I'm going to pick uh, emotional for 600. And we have a visual clue. And um, it's cookie time. Oh, my. I don't know what that means. Let's go ahead and take a look at the clue. So, this, the, the clue is it keeps you coming back for more. So what is a fun game? Game of Thrones, Girl Scout cookies, or any and all? Well, I happen to think that fun game will keep you coming back. Fun game of Jeopardy, in particular, will keep you coming back for more. 
Game of Thrones, my wife is completely in love with, so that's for sure. And Girl Scout cookies, well, who, who can resist that? So I think it's, it's any and all. And in fact, that is correct. So one of the aspects of games is that emotional tug to want to come back and play again. And the more your learners come back and play again, the more they'll be exposed to your material. And in so doing, they're going to want to play and they're going to look forward to their next training session. So what better feedback for you as the instructional designer, as the learning and development professional, than to want to have your employees come back and want the next training. So that's really one of the critical aspects of games and in Jeopardy in particular is that emotional connection that you are going to make and you're going to have them wanting more. Let's go ahead and emotional. Let's clear out this category and go for emotional for 400. All right, kind of a cool image. By the way, just so everybody knows, it does not, your imagery here does not need to be a still image. You can have a video. So if you have a video in particular or a snippet, 20, 30 second snippet of a video that you wish them to watch as your visual clue, bring it on. So, all right. So create an endorphin high, an emotional connection, creating an endorphin high. Game leaderboards, yeah. Running a marathon, sure. A first date, yeah. I think all of these definitely drive an endorphin high. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick all of these. And indeed, that is correct. So the critical thing here that we really wanted to drive home is that games have games well done like Jeopardy have the ability to drive a physical a positive physical reaction that keeps them emotionally engaged in the learning and let's clear out this particular line so we go the heart and brain holding hands very cute and engages the heart as much as the mind what is a great movie your favorite song, don't make me pick only one, in training games. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and don't make me pick only one. And in fact, that is correct. The key point here is that we, through training games and Jeopardy, will be engaging the entire person, both their intellectual brains as well as their hearts. And so doing, you're going to create that emotional bond between your material and that particular person. Let's go ahead and move over to attention. I'm gonna pick attention for 600. We have a visual clue here, it's a leaderboard. It happens to be the leaderboard for Jeopardy. And what is all that and much more drives replays Quiet distractions promotes active listening. Leaderboards do all that and much more, and it's a key component to your overall gamification strategy. As you are using games, whether they be as part of e-learning or at instructor-led training, which I absolutely just love, and I've seen it just magically transform live events for as few as 50 people to as many as 3,000 people using leaderboards will drive replayability. It will keep your learners paying attention and focused on your material as they, as they await and want to see how they're doing on the leaderboard because they want to be number one. Next visual clue. This is a famous statue. This is, uh, let's see what this is about. So this is the thinker. The thinker. So, the thinker for 400. What is, we need to pay attention here, We're running out of time. What is an, the arch enemy of the Flash? Any of you people love the Flash TV show as much as I do? My family and famous Rodan statue. Typical pose and an ILT when you're using games. Let's go for it all. I think that's absolutely true. 
And that indeed is correct. So one of the things that I found most remarkable is at instructor-led training, how these, how our games are being used in between 30 minutes, every 30 minutes of actual lecture, everybody knows that there's going to be a game. And it has everyone leaning in like the thinker and really paying attention to what is being uh, shared with them so that they want to be able to and need to be able to then bring it and, and retrieve that information to play a game every, every 30 minutes. Here's the last one here is a goldfish. What is this about? Why does this have to do with attention? Goldfish. So what is yes, yes, and yes has a five-second attention span, should not be on the sushi menu, and has a five- to ten-year lifespan. Well, I think it's yes, yes, and yes. And indeed, the average attention span of adults has plummeted to the depths from 12 minutes down to five minutes. And games, training games and Jeopardy games will help you grab more of that precious commodity. Today, you have five seconds to grab someone's attention. And you can only keep it for five minutes. Games is really going to help you take that attention and stretch it much like one would a stretch Armstrong game toy from, from our childhood. I'm going to switch now from using the game as my talking points in this webinar. I'm going to actually move over to the back end. Uh, so this is the where the magic happens, behind the velvet rope. This is the game creator. And what I wanted to do is... Um, I kind of hacked things a little bit and, uh, to be able to continue the conversation. Rather than having us play the, the games, and you remember we had five categories, if you recall. So here are our uh, five categories, right? Emotional all the way to culture. And here are those exact same categories right? that we saw. Emotional, we had here, engages the heart and the mind. You recall that being the clue. It was a mul multiple choice question type. It could have been. We also have text input, which is really neat, harder to play. There was that image, that cute image. And then here was the clue text. I decided to have a timer, have it be 60 seconds. I had the opening phrase of what is. And then you, I typed in the answers. And for this particular question, I decided not to have a feedback response. I certainly could have for both correct as well as incorrect responses for that particular question. But what I wanted to do now is I really wanted to kind of complete the board in a more timely fashion by just kind of talking through the other five reasons that you should consider using the Jeopardy game as part of your training. So under the category of learning, games very much are a complement to the presentation, to the videos, to the live instruction, to the audio, whatever the traditional methods you're using for your e-learning and instructor-led training games really are the mortar between those learning bricks. It's going to help cement those bricks together. The, the games is the place where your employees as players are going to manipulate the data that you're presenting to them. And it, it really moves the information from the receiving center of their brain. Think of it as the back warehouse that a truck just pulled up into with a whole bunch of information. And it causes that player to process the information. And in that processing of that information, they are bringing it to the front of the store, right? where then they can readily access that information when they need to deploy it in their jobs. So it's that retrieval and usage of the data in a game that drives home that long-term retention and the redeployment at the proper time. For assessment, it, here the thing, these games are, are, are great for learning. They're very an important tool for learning, but it's also the place that you're going to assess what they know. You're going to assess and, and not only figure out what they know, but you're going to figure out what you don't know, but what you think you know about what they know. And it's those moments that 
when, when you are looking at the analytics, and we're going to look at them in just a second, that, uh, that will drive home these aha moments when you are, when, when, when you, when you reveal that, wow, uh, 87% of my employees don't know this critical piece of information and without it, they can't do their jobs well, but I really thought they knew it. You're going to see those aha moments and, and they're going to be revelational for you. The other aspect of uh, using games and Jeopardy in particular is that because Jeopardy is so engaging and so much fun, you're going to be able to ask two, three dozen questions and delve much, much deeper than you otherwise ever could in any kind of multiple choice kind of quiz. So it's the very act of using these games that keeps your employees in it to win it. And you're going to be able to find out at much more granular level, what do they know? And you know, how well did I do in imparting the information that they need to do really well at their jobs? And as I mentioned, at aha moment. So let's take a look at the analytics. So the analytics, this is a game that we deploy at uh, trade shows. We've had 769 uh, players, three just today, have our high score for this game. And we've had, oh my goodness, we've had, uh, wow, lots of sessions, over a million sessions and an average session of about 45 minutes on this very deep game. But you can see here that the analytics dashboard is broken up into two primary sections. We have the player statistics, so you're able to drill down at the individual level. Um, you'll notice that we, in this game, only have player um, initials. We don't have email addresses because we're using this at trade shows and so wanted to maintain a level of anonymity. But the cool thing is you can dive down here and uh, for your employees, you can either deploy this from your LMS so you'll know exactly who the person was or you can use the full-on registration engine we have. But here you get to see how well this particular person, what are they getting wrong? Not only what are they getting wrong once, but what are they getting wrong twice? So this particular person didn't understand about receiving a request from a generic email address. Again, this is a cybersecurity Jeopardy demo that we created. And if this particular person is getting this question wrong multiple times, you may want to have a one-on-one -on -one intercession with this person. And then, as I mentioned earlier, at the higher level, really amazing to be able to see as a group that 60, almost 68% of the people don't know the number of days that you have to change your password. What is, a, what is a good number of days? So the answer happens to be 45. But if your job depends on knowing the number of days before your computer password is going to expire and 68% of the people are getting that wrong, well, that's something that has to be addressed carefully through different, uh, through different means of, of content distribution. So here we've shined, a light, we've shined a light on this aha moment about the number of days for a password. So analytics, super important. Uh, I, it, it, it's the other side of the coin for, for Jeopardy and for our other training games is not only will your employees learn, be deeply engaged, emotionally connected, but you will be able to assess what they know at the individual level and then at the group level. Uh, so uh, we have covered uh, emotional connection. We've talked about learning and how the games will drive deeper learning. We've talked about the assessments and how you'll be able to better assess what your employees know and, what you, uh, and, and improving what you know. Uh, we've talked about attention, how uh, from an attention perspective, games will absolutely grab the attention of your employees, of your players, and keep their attention uh, a, a, critical, uh, a, a critical factor in today's uh, Twitter and, and, and goldfish um, attention spans. Let's touch upon culture now. This is important. So... We've heard from folks that some, there are still many companies out there that have a very conservative, kind of stodgy culture. And therefore are a little hesitant to embark on, on using games as a complement to their traditional training. And uh, we believe fervently that Jeopardy uh, dispels that cultural hurdle. Jeopardy is now in its 35th year, and it's about as Americana as, 
apple pie and Chevrolet, and uh, it has become a, a part of the American DNA. And as a result of that, we have found that as we launched Jeopardy October of last year, now we have fortune from Fortune 50 companies to Main Street companies saying, yes, I, I now can use this because it is acceptable in a corporate culture. So very important, it has now dispelled that then. And your boss's boss's boss is not going to frown anymore. In fact, your boss's boss's boss is going to want to play the Jeopardy game. The other aspect of a culture perspective is that everybody knows how to play Jeopardy. The rules are common and everyone can instantly pick up the game and start playing. There's no need for any kind of tutorial, instant access. And it also appeals to a very wide range. So whether you have millennials or baby boomers, the Jeopardy game is one that will bring a smile to their face and they will want to play. And from a culture perspective, it, it, should, uh, it should not be overlooked that you not only have to get uh, your head uh, of learning and perhaps your CEO on board with the concept of using a game, but there's also your corporate counsel. And they're gonna wanna make sure that this is an officially licensed game, it's not a knockoff, we're doing things 100% legal, and uh, that was one very important reason that we went down the path of securing the actual license from Jeopardy Productions and Sony to this game is we, uh, we absolutely wanted to be 100% above board and legal so your general counsel uh, now can, will have no objections and, and rather I, I hope and look forward to having them play the Jeopardy game as well. So um, <clears throat> now that we've, we've gone through the five reasons, I do wanna take a, a quick tour and show you what you do in order to create a Jeopardy game. It is, uh, it is intended to be and is super fast and very, very easy. So as with all the games in the training arcade, you have three major components. You have your game information page, which is where you name your game and it assigns a URL for you. You set things like the default timer, whether you wanna have to require that your employees pass. Uh, you can even have a learn more URL where at, on the leaderboard you can direct them to learn more about this particular topic. You have the opportunity here to uh, provide a context page. Why am I going to play this game? What am I? What is the goal? Why? Why am I? Why am I here? So this is your uh, information pop-up page. You then can add your logo right here, and even if you if you wanted to, you could even include a link to your privacy policy. And then the questions. We've taken a look at this already, but I'll just take a five-second gander. Again, this is where you have the opportunity to change the amount of time that you allow your players to answer a question. So some of them might be harder. You might want to have 180 seconds. Uh, here is where you are adding the categories and we have already have the maximum categories of five. You can add uh, additional uh, rows by having additional clues here. So we just quickly added that. And you have double jeopardy and final jeopardy. And um, the questions themselves, you begin by setting your uh, question type, multiple choice or text input, adding a video, sorry, an image or a video, your clue, whether or not you want a particular timer for that question, your opening phrase, such as what is, where is, why is, and then answer your answers, your choices are right here, and you have your feedback response. It is as easy and as fast as that. And then when you go to publish, you have various ways that you can publish. You can have a private URL, or of course, you can uh, use SCORM uh, SCORM output. So we have five minutes left and I wanted to leave some space uh, to see if there are any questions. And um, Jamie, if you would assist me, if there are any questions on the table, I would uh, appreciate your assistance in bringing them to the fore. Yeah, hi Richard. Um, no questions in the G chat or in the Q&A, but if anybody wants to put a question in there, please feel free. Richard, I don't know if you want to, in the meantime, take advantage of um, talking about um, how there's a free trial offer and what the costs of Jeopardy and the other games are. Sure, thank you so very much, Jamie. So uh, bring on the questions, if you would. Um, so uh, the uh, uh, Jeopardy is one of the games in the training arcade, which is uh, a subscription-based model. 
and the cost of the uh, the cost of Jeopardy is uh, fourteen ninety nine for uh, for one year, and you have the opportunity to have up to uh, two thousand five hundred players, um, and you can make an unlimited number of Jeopardy games. So if you wanted to, you could have a Jeopardy game a week, and that would be fine. And all twenty five hundred players could uh, could play that unlimited number of. Um, of the games, you also we also have an offer. Uh, Jeopardy is part of the play pack, uh, which is uh, six thousand dollars per year, five five thousand nine ninety nine. You get all eight library of games as part of that pack. And it is important to note that for the month of April, we are offering a special promotion in which you would receive, if you sign up during the month, you receive ten additional game creators. With these, with the fourteen ninety nine you receive one game creator. That means you have one person that has access to the, uh, the game creation to create your games. And, uh, but for the month of April, we are offering 10 additional game creators at no additional cost. And it is, uh, that's a, almost a $5,000 value uh, as we, uh, we look forward to having lots of your instructional designers and managers uh, creating games. It should be noted, that one of the uh, one of the things, because the analytics are so important, that with every subscription you receive an unlimited number of analytics viewers. That means that you can have as many people on your team be able to look at the leaderboards as well as the analytics, and as many people as you wish would have access to this data. They just could not create brand new games. But uh, as mentioned, for the month of April, if you hurry you can still take advantage and receive the 10 additional game creators for free. Richard, there was just a chat question about um, are all the games a max of 2,500 players? I put an answer in the chat back, but if you want to address that to the whole group. Mm -hmm. Sure, so the 2,500 is, is the number of employees, players that can access the entire arcade. So it'd be 2,500 employees across all of those eight games across the unlimited number of versions of those eight games that you make. We do have some very large corporations that need more than 2,500 employees. And um, for those folks that are on the phone that have the 50,000, 100,000 employees, I just welcome you to reach out to us and we'll provide you a, um, a quote for that as well. So thank you, Jamie. Anyone else have any questions? Yeah, there's one more question in the Q&A, Richard. Um, they were asking if our company helps in writing content, if you'd like to address that. Absolutely, so that is a service that we offer. And when one of the things that we, uh, that we do when you are a brand new subscriber, so yes, the answer is yes, and we can uh, do that as a custom service. But one of the things that we do to onboard brand new subscribers is we really wanna make sure that your initial games are a huge success. So we very much want to sit down, have kickoff calls, uh, help you write those questions. You know, we review games, be able to counsel you so that um, that, uh, that that those initial games that you that you launch just are wildly successful, and, and help your employees learn that much better, and and have you become a uh, a superstar game creator. That looks like all the questions, Richard. And by the way, everybody well, who's on the call, we're gonna, we have been recording this and we'll promise to send out a recording to everyone. Well, thank you very much to everyone for joining and taking time out of your day. Um, sign up to a free trial. It's uh, just right on the website. It's a great way to kind of experiment and do some beta testing um, in, among your teams um, and uh, take advantage of this fantastic April promotion. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And we're here to answer any questions and, uh, and help. Thank you.